Today, our case takes us to Denver, Colorado, where the prostitute killer is said to have killed between 13 and 20 women. The thing is, no one is sure who this killer is. But before we get started, welcome to True Crime with Maneater. If you love all things true crime, including missing person cases, cold cases, and just the strange happenings of the world, you've come to the right place. Be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss a video upload. Let's get started. The Denver prostitute killer chose girls and women between the ages of 15 and 25. It seems that most of the women that were murdered were hitchhikers or had been sex workers. Unfortunately, the women were often picked up, beaten, and strangled to death. They were later left on the side of the road, sometimes even posed in compromising positions. 18-year-old Carolyn Walker disappeared on July 4, 1987. Carolyn had just been with her fiancé when they parted ways, and she was kidnapped. Unfortunately, she was raped and strangled. The strange thing about this murder is police found no incriminating evidence at the scene. Although Carolyn was a gymnast and she was a great swimmer, and everyone mentioned that she had just considerable physical strength meaning she probably fought fiercely against her attacker. Yet somehow, there's no physical evidence left behind. 17-year-old sex worker Kimberly Jean Grabin was found raped and strangled on August 18, 1979, near the highway. 15-year-old Stephanie Ann Ballman went missing in October of 1980 after hitchhiking her way home. Unfortunately, her naked body was found in a ravine on the outskirts of Denver in October. It appears that she had been beaten and tortured, and at one point, she went unconscious. That's when her attacker threw her in the ravine, and she died of hypothermia. 18-year-old Donna Wayne went missing on July 14, 1986, after going to the bar with some friends. Her body was found a month later. Because the bodies of these women were often found either a month later or months later, there was often no physical evidence because of the state of decomposition. The thing is... Police have some witness statements saying that the killer was a 30-year-old white man, but police believe they know who the serial killer is. Vincent Groves was born in April of 1954. His father was a mailman and his mother was a teacher, and he was the eldest of three children. His family lived in western Denver, and by all accounts, they were just a normal family. They were middle class, they respected the law, Nobody got in trouble. All seemed well with the family. Vincent Groves was a good student and a good player. He had played on his basketball team in high school, and he was liked by his peers. He was considered popular and a nice person. After high school, he attended college in Iowa, where he played on the local basketball team. Unfortunately, this wouldn't last long. In 1974, he dropped out of college because he really just wasn't attending at all. He didn't go to his classes. He didn't really bother to make an effort while there. After dropping out of college, he would return to Denver and move in with his grandmother. At this point, he found a job as an electrician, but his partying and drinking seemed to have increased. And as his alcohol usage increased, he also started spending a lot of time in the red light district. In late 1977, Vincent Gross met a 17-year-old girl named Jeanette Baca, and he decided that he was going to become her pimp. But on June 11, 1978, the 17-year-old girl's body was found in Woodland in Jefferson County. Almost immediately, investigators went to Vincent Groves to figure out if he was involved. But really, they had no evidence of his guilt, though they had a lingering feeling that he was to blame for the 17-year-old girl's murder. A short time later, he met a 21-year-old woman, Norma Jean Halford. She was from California, and they kind of just started to date and live together. But then Norma Jean would go missing. Her empty car was found parked on a mountain road outside of Georgetown. But to this day, nobody knows what happened to Norma Jean. They can't seem to locate her if she is alive, and if she's not, they don't know where her body is. Towards the end of 1979, Vincent Groves became addicted to drugs, but he would marry a woman known as Janet Hill. Unfortunately, this was anything but a kind and loving marriage. Vincent Groves was known to be incredibly violent and volatile. He would quit his job as an electrician during this time 
and find work as a janitor. This allowed him to continue with his drug habit because he works strange hours while also allowing him to continue going down to the red light district. And then on August 14th, 1981, Vincent Groves would take a 17-year-old girl known as Tammy Sue Woodrum out camping, and there he murdered her. It turns out that Vincent did tell his wife about this murder, and she convinced him to confess to the murder and turn himself in. And he would do this. He'd go to the police station, he gave a full confession, but he did insist that the young girl died from an overdose. The autopsy, on the other hand, proved otherwise. The 17-year-old girl was raped and strangled to death. They also found that there were no traces of any drugs in her system. Vincent would be charged with second-degree murder and found guilty. The thing is, he only received a 12-year sentence, and this blows my mind. He murdered a 17-year-old girl, he raped her, he strangled her, and he only got 12 years in prison. Absolutely disturbing. During his time in prison, he would divorce his wife, he would finish college, and attend different programs for rehabilitation of sex offenders. So he was found guilty in the summer of 1982, and in February of 1987, he was paroled and released from prison. After he was paroled, Vincent moved back in with his parents, and his family was incredibly supportive. They helped him get a job, and kind of got him back on his feet. He would have a job at a local department store and churches as a janitor. But Vincent wasn't rehabilitated at all. In fact, he was still visiting these areas of high prostitution and drug trafficking. In March of 1987, he met a 20-year-old sex worker known as Shayla Washington. He would pay her for services, drive her to a motel, They would do drugs together, and then he beat and tried to strangle her. Luckily, other residents at the motel heard the struggle and called for police. By the time police had gotten to the scene, Vincent Groves had already fled, but the woman was alive and able to describe her attacker and his car. And then in August of 1988, that girl he had taken to the motel and attempted to strangle had identified his car and reported it to the police. By this time, Vincent Groves was a suspect in more than 20 murders of Denver girls, and they had all been strangled. Investigators realized that Vincent Groves was very familiar with the victims, and he was a known drug dealer. In most cases, he was the last person seen with the victim. Based mostly on circumstantial evidence and testimonies, Vincent Groves was arrested on September 1st, 1988, and they began to interrogate him. During his interrogation, he never said that he committed these crimes. In fact, he denied them completely. They would take a blood sample and they would go search his car and his apartment, but they didn't find any incriminating evidence. But he was charged with assaulting Shayla Washington. Due to this assault charge, Vincent would start a lawsuit claiming that he acted in self-defense. He would claim that Shayla stole $1,600 from him and tried to attack him. And he said that this was proven because prior to this, she had been convicted of cocaine possession. The thing is, the court believed him. Because she was addicted to drugs, Vincent Groves was acquitted. This makes me endlessly mad because a young woman who had a substance abuse problem wasn't believed. He very much did harm her, and he did attack her. Even if she tried to steal money from him, was strangling her the proper way to handle the situation? I don't think that's acting in self-defense, actually. I believe that Vincent Groves intended to kill her that night, and he was just caught doing so. Luckily, Vincent Groves wouldn't go free. Because of that DNA sample taken, he was linked to other crimes. Vincent Gross was linked to the murder of 19-year-old Juanada Lovato, who was found in April 1988 in a rural area east of Denver. His DNA was found on 25-year-old Diane Manker, whose body was found in a neighboring county near I-25 west of Denver. He was convicted of Lovato's killing in 1990 and received life imprisonment, and then he was charged with Diane's murder. He was convicted and received 20 years for that. During his trial, prosecutors did provide evidence of his involvement in eight other murders in the Denver area. The thing is, no new charges were brought against him. And then in 1996, at the age of 42, Vincent Groves was dying. So detectives went to him and asked if he would share the fate of his other victims. But Vincent 
wouldn't do it. And that says a lot about the type of person he is. I mean, he's dying at the age of 42. He can't get out of prison anyways, but he can bring some sort of relief to the families. And instead, he went to his grave with secrets. By using DNA, they have linked him to more crimes. His victims include Emma Jennifer, who is 25, Joyce Ramey, who is 23, and Peggy Cuff, who is 20. And they were all strangled in 1979. They also have circumstantial evidence that they believe ties him to the 1988 killing of Pamela Montgomery, who was 35. Although many believe that Vincent Groves was the Denver prostitute killer, other people aren't so sure. In fact, they think another person is responsible for those crimes. Many Many people believe that Billy Edwin Reed is the Denver prostitute killer. In 2006, Billy Reed was arrested at his home in Denver. He was charged with the murder of Linnell Williams after investigators successfully tied his DNA to the crime scene. Her body was found, unfortunately, in a compromising position on October 14, 1989, near Clear Creek by two East High School students. And that seems eerily similar to what the Denver prostitute killer had been doing. They would charge him with murder for killing Lisa Kelly, who was a sex worker, and her badly decomposed body was found on March 24th, 1989. Unfortunately, she remained unidentified for 17 years until a partial print was pulled from the crime scene. Police would also suspect him of killing Quina Sanders in 1988. During the time, Billy Reed was considered homeless and he was a bit of a transient who was known to have traveled extensively between California and Colorado. He was convicted in 2008 of killing Williams and Kelly after a jury verdict, and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. It seems that Billy Edwin Reed and Vincent Groves were working pretty much at the same time. They were both serial killers, they were both murdering women during the same time, and it seemed that their method was quite similar. I do question if they're both responsible, if they're both technically the Denver prostitute killer, because maybe their crimes were incredibly similar, and they're both responsible for certain murders. It does seem likely that perhaps they were looking for one serial killer while they had two roaming free. I do feel like the case wasn't taken as serious, because these women were often sex workers or hitchhikers who had run away from home, and police during that time really didn't, in a sense, value these people, these women, and that just breaks my heart entirely. These two men could have murdered significantly more women, and we may never know. The one thing that does stand out to me is witnesses claim that they saw a 30-year-old white man with some of these women that went missing. So either this is a case of perhaps this 30-year-old man was seen talking to these sex workers and perhaps he had even paid them and then one of these men Vincent Groves or Billy Reed came along and picked them up after or perhaps they have another serial killer out there who was never caught I mean there's just so many theories for this case sure it could be Vincent Groves it could be Billy Reed but there could also be a person out there who hasn't been charged for the crime but I would love to know your thoughts on the case. Do police know who the Denver prostitute killer is? Or is there a serial killer out there who hasn't been charged for his crimes? But that's it for today, guys. If you like this video or any other video on my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss a video upload. If there's a case you'd like me to cover, pop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to it. In the meantime, check out some other videos on my channel while you wait for the next upload and I'll see you then.